Welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, I see a lot of a lot of great faces on here. My name is Cindy Nava and I am part of Team Georgine and we are just thrilled to be here with you today. Um, we know that your time is precious so we want to make sure that we are um, keeping the program on time. We will go until 245 just to let you know just housekeeping. Um, and again, we at Team Georgine are just thrilled and excited to have you all join us. We have some great individuals uh, at the table with us today for the launch of our Breaking Bread with Georgine series. And this is monumental for us. We wanna make sure that communities are listening, that we are hearing them and that we are talking about the issues that matter to our communities and, and to the people of, uh, of New Mexico. And right here you know especially with women's history month we wanted to make make a a, a, a highlight for folks that are going to be joining us today and also some of our up and coming um women and poets here uh in the albuquerque region we are really really excited to have as well uh, governor brian vio from acoma um, and poet Raina Davis joining us today. So I am sure that you all will enjoy this. And of course, our soon to be uh, and hopeful Congresswoman, uh, Georgine, Representative Georgine Lewis. So with that said, um, also for those of you that wanna get engaged with the campaign, uh, we're gonna be plugging in some information into the chat on how you can get involved, where to email, but you can do so at info at georgine4nm.com. So again, thank you and welcome to our first uh, Breaking Bread with Georgine Lewis series. And I am gonna toss it over to poet Raina Davis. Hi everybody, my name is Raina Davis. Um, I'm so happy and excited to be here to support Georgine Lewis um, and really grateful to share this space with you all today. Um, I'm gonna share a poem um, and it's called Legacies. My story is my grandmother's tongue quick with cautionary tales, prayers, and curse words sometimes. Red chili tainted lips always on Sunday and never late grandma, knowing how to season her stories and when to bring the heat in an argument, unbreakable woman, teaching me my voice is meant to be used, heard, and un unhindered. My story is my mother's hands, breaking and bending and bending and bending and holding holding her breath, our family together. It is how I learned to embrace my sisters, holding by the wrists and pulling up my mother, taught me the knuckles are stronger than you think. I look at my palms and say to myself, how curious, how wondrous, how creative, how kind. With this, she taught me battles are fought best in numbers. The great Audrey Lord said, I'm not free while any woman is unfree, even when her shackles are very different from my own. And I am not free as long as one person of color remains chained, nor is any of you. I speak here as a woman of color who is not bent upon destruction, but upon survival. My mother taught me survival. The power in my anger and the radical act of its preservation, especially of the self. My story is the yearning, the burning, the unlearning, undoing, doing together, together growing, sowing the seeds of what is this legacy, this community. This story is my story, but it isn't just my own. I am, the, am only one facet in my own becoming, my community, our land, our voices, our legacies, our stories are all written together. So that's my poem, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> And yeah, thank you again for um, allowing me to be here and share the space with you. And again, I'm so grateful to be able to share so much support for Georgine. Um, I'm now going to pass it off to Governor Bio. Thank you, Reina, for the introduction and thank you for that beautiful poem. Um, I want to hear it again. It's uh, quite powerful. Kawatsi um, Hopa. Uh, uh, 
It's good to see you and good to see everyone. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in Breaking Bread. Um, first of all, I love bread <laughs> and I love Georgine. So it's a great um, combination and um, really happy to be here with all of you this afternoon. Uh, you know, I, I'm just so excited about this. I, 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 um, I'm so inspired by Georgine, have been for, for quite some time now. Um, and I learned things from her. And as a matter of fact, just this week, we had an opportunity to engage in some pretty intense discussions. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you just learn a lot from, um, from people, and, you know, we all do. And uh, I really admire Georgine's leadership and appreciate all that she's doing for uh, our state and certainly for the Native American uh, population in our state. And, um, and Georgine has already given back to her community in, in different ways. And, and certainly in her role within the state legislature, she has uh, provided our community with, with resources, access to resources, acknowledgement of our Pueblo, acknowledgement of the contributions of our Pueblo. And, um, and, and as she continues to lead in this, this position within the state and, and next on the federal level, you know, she is contributing a significant amount to the recognition of Native American women, women in general. And, um, you know, just, just one of those, uh, our, our, our um, uh, our trailblazers in this time. And so Georgine, I, I'm very uh, happy for you and grateful to you for um, your willingness to serve uh, in, in the capacity uh, that you will, I'm sure, when, when, we're, when all is said and done, and we'll break bread again um, in, in DC, this time we'll bring the real stuff, the oven bread from Akama. <laughs> Uh, but um, I just uh, uh, want to express also that the tribal government at Akama is very excited and I'm sure that our community members are just as excited and proud of, of uh, Georgine and her accomplishments and we'll do all that we can to support Georgine and her um, uh, commitment to the service and uh, just getting her into, uh, into Congress. Uh, but it's going to take everyone's um, contribution um, and support and prayers. And so I um, join all of you in, in offering um, those on behalf of Georgine. So um, with that, I have the opportunity to uh, not only break bread to this afternoon, but also to ask some questions of our representative. And, um, you know, it was I had a hard time actually trying to think of you know, what, what, is it, what are the best questions to ask this young lady um, because she's super smart and um, I, I, I just wanted to um, you know, ask questions that uh, give her the opportunity to, to uh, share with us her um, outlook on some really critical issues, uh, but also uh, to share with us you know, her, her agenda going and walking into on, on this new path of, of leadership. And, and so um, I'm going to begin uh, with the, with the Q&A and uh, Georgine, I, um, uh, I look forward to, to your response and uh, please let me know uh, if, you, if you require any clarification. Uh, I'm going to ask these questions of you in Akama. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, so my first question, Representative Lewis, is uh, what is your policy? Uh, what are your policy objectives going in um, to this uh, 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 as a candidate for this uh, seat? And how do your objectives align with those of President Biden? Thank you, Governor Guazi Halpa. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. Um, many thanks to Rena Davis for her beautiful poem. I love 
legacy and thinking about legacy, especially during uh, Women's History Month. So thank you for that. I think it brings a lot of these important uh, issues to the forefront that we'll talk about today. And thank you, Governor Bio. before I answer your question. <laughs> I just really want to thank you for your continuous support, not just during this campaign, but through my entire legislative camp campaign and career and, and even prior to that. It's, it's so meaningful to have support from leaders like you and people within our community because um, those who those are the people that we think about every single day in doing our work. So I appreciate that you have been all along very supportive. And um, I love Fred too. <laughs> and I hope to uh, once it's safe again, gather with all of you to have these discussions in person. But we really thought about normally when it's not during a pandemic that we would come together over food, including our oven bread, chili stew, um, really to serve a bunch of purposes, which was gather in family, gather in community, gather in spirit, but also have the important discussions and, and food always seems to bring us together. So that's the whole concept of, of breaking bread. And again, I hope to do it in the very near future with all of you. Um, and, and before I answer your question, I just wanna give a, a brief introduction to those that don't know me. Um, and, and I'll try and be pretty brief so we can get to these questions, but um, I'm Georgine Lewis. I'm from the Pueblo of Acoma. I'm serving my fifth term in the New Mexico legislature where I chair the House State Government Elections and Indian Affairs Committee and co-chair the interim Indian Affairs Committee. And it's been a very exciting and um, hardworking nine year period during that tenure. And really this work that I do has come about because of my core values that have been taught to me by my family, our tribal leaders and community members and, and really friends from, from everywhere, all different parts of the nation and all different parts of, of, of the world even, um, but, but really coming from Acoma, knowing that we value clans, which means we are family, we are not alone. Culture, which means we value our traditions, we honor them, we respect people, and those are the driving forces behind what we do. And, and last but not least, community, which is, who we are today, how we're gathering today, even though we can't do it in person, we're able to do it virtually. And I so treasure that we're able to continue conversations like this. And running for office has never been um, something that is not scary for me, <laughs> but it's something that I feel that I have a responsibility to do. Um, when I first ran for the state legislature, it was because 11% of the state of New Mexico is Native American. We have Native American population of 11%, and that's not reflected in our state legislature. And so now we look at Congress, and we were so happy and honored when Deb Holland and Sharice Davis were the first two Native American women to be elected to Congress and seeing the, the work and the momentum that Deb has done. Although I'm extremely excited and, and proud of her, I don't want that Native American voice to be lost. And so in, in going to answer your questions, Governor Vile, the priorities that I hope to address in Congress is um, first 
COVID recovery. Um, again, now that things are happening in different ways, we need to ensure that things like healthcare are now accessible to everyone. Because we've seen how COVID-19 doesn't care about your class or your race or your education. It's something that affects everyone and it has affected everyone. So we need to ensure that um, we have accessible healthcare. In addition to that, having lost so many jobs due to COVID, we need to ensure that there's not only creation of jobs, but getting folks back to work. Um, this is important so that people can take care of their families and um, know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the other thing is um, Mother Earth, addressing the climate crisis that is real and immediate. I want to ensure that we have clean air, clean water, and that our Mother Earth is protected. We passed out a bill of House Judiciary this morning that you know, takes a step in that direction. Um, and, and of course it passed on bipartisan lines, but this is something that is really important to me and to our future generations. And I, I am extremely excited when I see young people talking about the climate crisis and how we need to address it because these are future leaders and I am very respectful of their voices. And that's another thing I'd like to address. And, and finally, I, I hope this doesn't sound too broad, but really just carrying on the work that Representative Holland has started. I think she's just been such a fierce advocate for so many issues that affect Indian tribes, that affect working people, that affect women. And so um, I would love to continue her work and build upon it so that we see uh, stronger communities, stronger families, and, and really ensure that um, we have a seat at the table and that she was the, one of the first people um, to, to really have Indian country pay attention. And so now with, with the support that the tribes have provided and we now see an amplification of her voice and, and what tribes and Native Americans have been saying for generations. <laughs> so, so thank you, Governor. And, and how that fix, fits with President Biden's um, agenda. You know, I, I think in um, his campaign and now seeing him as acting president, you know, really, working towards our democratic values. We're, we're, we're seeing, you know, COVID-19 relief, uh, protecting the environment, um, really addressing issues like race and trying to address issues where we need to correct injustices that have occurred. So I would love to help to ensure that President Biden and his administration are successful because we do need to show voters in the next go around that when we have the right people doing the job, we can do some wondrous things and, and some good things, again, for, for the everyday person, not for corporations, not for the rich and powerful, but for everyday people. So um, I, I, I thank you for those questions, and that's how I would I would love to move forward if I have this opportunity to be in Congress. Thank you, Representative. Appreciate your responses. Um, I do have one more question, if you don't mind. Um, and the question is, it's a loaded one because it's 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 quite sensitive, uh, but it's uh, unfortunately part of um, our reality in this time. And, and so the question is, 
Uh, you know, systemic racism remains a problem in our country. Uh, and if you would please share the ways in which you would address or will address this issue uh, if elected to Congress. Thank you, Governor. Um, you know, unfortunately, we've seen this racism, systemic racism, as recently as the insurrection. And we know that it's alive. And now we have a real responsibility to address it. And, and I think we have to have leaders that aren't afraid of addressing it, that put it up in the forefront and say, this is not acceptable. Racism is not acceptable. And I think it's gonna take a lot of education and um, really ensuring that diversity is not something that's unknown, but diversity is something that we can learn from. And we've been really fortunate in New Mexico to have such diverse cultures and diverse people. And being in the legislature, I've had the opportunity to work with some fast, fantastic people, but also some fantastic issues. And this session, I introduced the New Mexico Civil Rights Bill, or excuse me, the New Mexico Civil Rights Act, which gets to the core of ensuring equal treatment under the law, regardless of your race, regardless of your background. Again, so that when people are treated differently because of the color of their skin and their civil rights are violated, they should be able to have a day in court to seek recourse. And so this is something that's been in the news and in the papers and it's, you know, folks in, in the business community and uh, law enforcement and, and other areas are saying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. What are you gonna do? You're gonna break the systems. But, but I do hope to break the systems of systemic racism because we need to do that. We need to protect every person in New Mexico and just make sure that people are, are treated with respect and dignity. So um, this is something that I also like to put forward in Congress. You know, every opportunity that I can, I want to work on educating people that, um, I, I, I guess I do think that racism is, you know, a matter of ignorance. And, and generally when we're able to have conversations and break bread in person or virtually, we can have these opportunities to express our voices, express our positions. And even if we don't agree, we can hear one another to the extent that, okay, well now maybe I understand your position, but I think um, we need to have those conversations. And um, that's what I love about, about feast days at Acoma where I, I can even invite my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to experience feast days and to eat chili stew and, and have oven bread and um, see the dances and, and the beauty of Acoma. So um, I, I hope to continue these conversations and um, continue to fighting racism and, and showing people that um, diversity is something that we need to embrace and be proud of. Thank you, Representative. I appreciate those, uh, the response. Uh, and, and it's such a, a critical issue for all of us and it really, um, I think for those of us who are tribal leaders, including yourself, um, you know, we have to be aware of these, um, of, of the issue and also be willing uh, to address the issues and bring them to the forefront 
within our respective governments and within our respective communities, because unfortunately we see some of those things playing out in our own tribal communities, which is not healthy and is, there's no place for, for it in our, in our culture and the values that you spoke to uh, earlier. So um, I, I appreciate your um, answering my questions and taking my questions. And uh, I know that there's a, 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 an opportunity for others to also ask you some questions this afternoon. But I wanna say thank you and I look forward to um, the uh, working alongside you and, and supporting you uh, as much as I can moving forward. And again, I invite everyone on, on this um, breaking bread um, episode that uh, we all um, are, are, are uh, uh, willing to offer support and to follow the work of, of Representative Lewis and, and to do all that we can uh, during her campaign for Congress. And I look forward to that day that we can uh, celebrate your uh, another achievement, uh, Representative Lewis, and I'm sure that your family, uh, your parents and siblings and um, your daughter, granddaughter and grand grandfather um, are all very proud of you. And I join them in that, that great pride that um, we all celebrate uh, for, um, for you. So thank you for the opportunity to participate this afternoon. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Cindy. Thank you. Thank you, thank Governor. You. Thank you, Governor. We appreciate you and we're thrilled to have you here. Um, at this moment, I'm gonna uh, toss it over to poet Raina Davis for her question. Hi, um, yeah, so I think you touched a bit on this earlier, but um, I wanted to ask, how have the women in your life been influential in your leadership, community building, and continued resilience? Um, and how do you plan on continuing this knowledge in your work? Thank you. So um, today is actually my mom's birthday. <laughs> So I want to wish her a very happy birthday. I know she's cooking and <laughs> getting things prepared, but um, of course I, I credit my my mother, my grandmothers, um, my sister, aunties. You know, so many people, cousins um, that are women, and and now my daughter and my grandchildren, my my granddaughters, um, to really providing the support, I think first and foremost, to, to tell me I am capable of doing whatever I can and whatever I set my, my, my goals. And, um, and, and I think with, with my sister and my daughter and my niece and my, my granddaughters, um, always remembering that these are our future. And so for them, they do provide support, but they also provide a great amount of motivation because we want so many things for them. We want a world that doesn't have racism. We want a world that doesn't have, you know, systemic poverty and, and these uh, circles where folks can get trapped. Um, so, so that is really what drives my work and what drives me to aim to be better. And um, you know, I'll I'll take that to Congress and ensure that women have have equal rights, that um, women have um, reproductive health rights. Uh, really, to ensure that um, we remember, and especially coming from Acoma, that that women are. Um, are, are sacred and, and women are special and women um, need to be honored and really carrying my efforts um, to do policy that reflects that. And um, I, I, I feel that I've tried to do that in the legislature <laughs> and uh, we repealed the ban on abortion just recently that was signed by Governor Lujan Gresham. So I, I do 
try and work towards those goals and I'll continue to do that uh, once in Congress. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you, Reina, for your question. Um, and we did receive a few questions, uh, Representative, um, that we wanna make sure that we address. I know that we, um, we have 15 more minutes to go, so we will try to get through as many as we can. But again, just thank you all for those of you that submitted questions and just for, for sharing this, this time with us. Um, so this question comes from Fernando Sanchez and his question is, what legislation have you championed in New Mexico and how could you continue that work in Congress? So thank you. <laughs> I, I've been in the legislature for nine years now and it's hard to reflect on a lot of the things that we've done, but currently um, a couple of the bills that are moving are, are the Civil Rights Act that's now in Senate Judiciary. I think we have our last committee hearing on Monday and hopefully we'll get to the Senate floor and off to the governor. Um, as, as Governor Vio referred to, we've had a lengthy meeting on the State Indian Child Welfare Act and really to ensure that uh, uh, Native American children are, are kept with tribes and tribal relatives. That is um, moving along. Okay, we have some revisions to that. Native American polling places uh, got off the floor a few days ago, and that's to ensure that folks have an opportunity to vote in times of health concerns when tribes have closed borders. And um, I talked a little bit about my private right of action to ensure that folks are not violating environmental um, acts in the state. And another one is the Human Trafficking Act, which is sitting on the Senate side, it passed the floor. And this really also goes to the issue of missing and murdered indigenous women because sex trafficking, especially with technology, is, 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 is getting easier for um, folks to do. And, and really where people are being promised good, way, good paying jobs or even going to um, charming them with romantic relationships. So again, just because it can happen to anyone regardless of class or education, color of your skin, um, that's something that needs to be addressed and, and ensure that those victims aren't um, criminalized by coming forward to say they were victims of sex trafficking. But just in general, um, a lot of my legislation has focused on uh, bills that protect the environment. Also bills that protect um, opportunities for Native Americans. Another bill that I'm working, or several bills that I'm working on with Representative Lente address the Yasi Martinez lawsuit to ensure that um, Funding and resources are made to uh, minorities, so Hispanics, Native Americans, uh, kids with disabilities, so that um, we can get them more resources in the schools. So um, it's been a long time, but I, I can't go through all of the bills that I've co-sponsored, but I think, you know, touching on those priorities that I've always had and those priorities that I would take to Congress, I hope shows that um, my, my passion for working in, in these kind of issues is, is there and will continue to be there. Thank you, Representative. We really appreciate it. Um, and upon the closing, just wanted to make to note that we will have uh, our great friend and super volunteer Tweety uh, sharing an invitation for everyone to join us on an upcoming uh, fundraiser next week. Uh, but we will leave that towards the end. Um, at this moment, we uh, will continue with uh, another question. So this one says, what are your plans to address native issues once you are at the national level? So um, I'm, a, I'm a representative from House District 26, which is located in Southwest Albuquerque. 
And um, it doesn't have any tribal lands in the district. It's um, Bernalillo County. But I, and, and the Native American population in my district is about 5%. But, but even that being the case, I've always introduced legislation affecting tribes and Native American people. And um, I would continue that because as I've been telling folks, you know, this isn't just an important race for CD1 in New Mexico. It's really an important race for Indian country because as a lawyer working with tribes and Native American people for my entire career, I know the issues of tribal sovereignty, of promoting self-determination and ensuring that tribes maintain that government to government relationship that shouldn't be breached by outsiders, that there's uh, trust obligations by the federal government to fund certain programs and to pay attention to tribes. So I am committed through and through, and I think I've shown that in my work at the legislature, even though my, my Native American population is small, that these are issues that our tribes are asking and, and in some instances demanding that we address that they've normally or, or maybe in the past haven't had someone advocate for them. So I've been doing that in the state and I want to continue that in Congress and I want to um, get allies like I have done in the New Mexico legislature where I, I have the privilege of having my colleagues defer to me on issues important to Native Americans and, and they'll ask me, how should I vote on this? And I'll tell them <laughs> and they'll trust me. And you know that's again, educa educating folks that um, don't know about tribes, that perhaps haven't had opportunities to make friends with you know, our Native American brothers and sisters. So, so I, I would welcome that opportunity just to ensure that I'm able to inform them of uh, things that tribes face. If, if, if we have uh, tribes that visit me in DC, they don't have to spend 30 minutes explaining to me what it's like to live on a reservation because I've lived on a reservation. Um, they, they, they won't have to tell me or inform me that in some parts there's no running water or clean water that people can access. So, so I um, have committed, commit again <laughs> to looking out for tribes and Native American people. And you know, really our, our issues are very similar to other people of color where um, with systemic racism, where education isn't fully funded, where we don't have access to quality health care. So um, this is a fight for all of us. And I, I'd love to have the opportunity to, to fight in Congress. Thank you, Georgine. Um, I think diving right into that, um, just adding on to that question, there's another one that asks, if you become the CD1 representative, how will you ensure that underserved communities are able to engage with your office, your team, and, and that they are also represented within your congressional team? So um, I love that question because Cindy is part of our team. And Cindy just took her, um, her exam to be a United States citizen and is now is one. <laughs> we have, you know, Alejandro on our team. So we're already engaging qualified, knowledgeable, you know, and just outstanding people of color in the campaign. And I would love to have folks like Cindy and others that are extremely qualified, but sometimes don't have the opportunity to um, be in, in these offices. And, and I would love to have staff there. I think having folks from New Mexico is important because again, um, 
knowing our issues, knowing our communities, these are the folks that also are going to have that passion to to help address these issues. And and we've seen that with I've seen that with my staff, who's been incredible at um, helping get this campaign going, having some great momentum, and we, we are excited about some upcoming things. So uh, I that's that's how I would address it. I would I would get folks that you all know and love <laughs> to be working right there beside me. Thank you, Georgine. And thank you for the shout out. And thank you all. Yes, um, I it feels really amazing. I am now an official US citizen. Um, among those things are, you know, I'll be able to cast a vote for the first time in my life after 25 years of being severely involved in politics. So there's a huge irony there. So working with somebody like Georgine, um, I think is just a true reflection of somebody that walks the talk and is really committed to the people of the state. Um, and we uh, as a team are exactly walking those values and ensuring that we create those opportunities as well. Um, I know that we are getting close to our closing time, but I would like to uh, pass it over to, again, one of our super volunteers and allies, Tweety, who is uh, joining us today. And she has an invitation uh, for everyone. Go ahead, Tweety. Hello, everybody. Um, I wanted to invite, and I know there's some people, I think on this call, this get together that, I've already sent an invitation to. But this coming Tuesday, March 9th, from 5.30 to 6.30, uh, we are planning uh, the host committee, and that consisted of uh, Laura Liaki, Laura Harris, and Barudin, uh, both Norman and I, Swazo, uh, Joseph Charlotte Little, Stephanie Poston, Adan and Rebecca Ortega, we are all part of the host committee and we're having a fundraiser for Georgine this coming Tuesday. So we hope that um, you guys please give to us, um, to Georgine. Um, I know, we know that she will do good for us. We'd like to keep our native representative from New Mexico. Um, there in DC. So that's why it's extremely important that we support Georgine. And uh, we'd like all of you to try to um, come to the fundraiser if you can. We would appreciate it. And if you can't, that's all right, but we'll, we'll also take your money too. <laughs> However way we can support Georgine. Thank you, Tweety, and thanks to everyone that's helping with the fundraiser. I really appreciate it. Unfortunately, money is part of this campaign world, but we promise that we are doing everything we can to run a great race, and um, we will put your dollars to work, no doubt. And, and Tweety, just for folks that don't know, is the chairwoman of our Native American uh, uh, Democratic Caucus. So her and her team also do such great work in New Mexico to get folks educated about candidates that are uh, Native American allies and, and get folks out to vote. So um, thank you for all of your work and, and to the caucus. Thank you. Thanks again, Tweety. And just for anyone, who, if, if folks are interested, uh, the team just posted the link to the fundraiser on the chat. Um, so just make sure to look, uh, look on the chat if you are interested in doing that. And if you are interested in looking at participating with the campaign in any way, shape or form, we will take anything that you want to support us with, volunteer time, wards. Um, we are actively looking for folks to run uh, for ward chair positions. Um, so please let us know. Uh, we really are trying to create this momentum and highlight the importance of electing Georgine into this position, not only as a native woman, but as a leader who is effective, who has proved and walked the talk in New Mexico. And she is more than ready to carry those values into Congress. Um, Georgine, I'm gonna pass it over to you to close this up. 
Thank you, Cindy and, and uh, Alejandro and, and Alexa for putting on a great event. Thank you, Rina, for your beautiful poem. I look forward to hearing more from you. And, and really, uh, I think your voice is important and I'm grateful that you joined us today. And, and Governor Vio, again, you know, your support is just incredibly overwhelming. And, and, and I thank you and your family has always been super supportive. So, um, Tawa'a. And for everyone that joined us today, you know, I, I really mean so much to have your support and to have you in this incredible journey, one that I probably never even imagined <laughs> would happen. But um, I, I, I am working hard. I will always look to you for, for your voice and, and your issues and, and your questions and I would be thrilled and honored to be uh, the next Congresswoman to, to carry our, our fight and uh, really ensure that our voices are heard. So thanks to everyone. Again, your support just is so incredible. Thank you all.